We had a juicy night of not so fast come up in the last board meeting, and since we have video of it, hey, let's just get right to it. This is regarding a board of adjustment position, though. Well, it expired about three months, and we'll then be open for interviews to fill that position again. Um, I didn't really know how to bring this up, where to bring this up. Um, so the vote that I placed on December 13th for Board of Adjustments placement was influenced um, by information I got before and then during the meeting, which was uh, then blown to pieces the next day. Um, one of the emails that I received was from Trustee Teets stating that the uh, chair of the board was stressing concern about how the item was being handled. And so the next day after the vote, I called him and I asked him how he thought the vote had gone. And um, he's like, I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. I was like, so were you concerned about what was going on last night? Did you know about what was going on last night? He was so confused that he didn't really know what to say. So I sent him the email and asked him if he had talked to anybody about that um, vote that was coming up. And his response was, Hi, Kaylor. I have never said anything to anyone about this. I don't know anyone on this message. I also don't talk to really anyone in the town of Wellington. I'm not sure who Megan is. Levi, I have only met twice at the last two meetings and have never talked outside of the board. I have never talked to Trustee Sherell. Sorry, I'm super confused on this whole thing. Please let me know if there's anything else I can help you out with. So I don't know if the information of the chair of the board being concerned about it was a mistake or a lie. I don't know what to do with it. So in my email, did it say chair of the board of adjustments? Yes. I will have to look at that, but yeah, Is I don't remember stating that, chair of board of adjustments, but yeah, I will said the chair of the BOA. So that was, that was my concern. Um, it was upsetting to say the least, and it's, it's not fun bringing this up, but I wanted everybody to be aware of, of what went down. Um, so there you have it. Mayor, and I thank you, and I will look at it, and if I did anything wrong, I am more than happy to admit if I mistype, I have not spoken with the chair of the Board of Adjustments. I yeah. did speak with someone who was sitting in a position on the Board of Adjustments, and that was Levi. Okay. Thank you. To fully understand what happened, let's jump back to the Board of Trustees meeting on December 13th, where they had already appointed the new member to the Board of Adjustments, and then someone got pissy and sent emails out to the Board about how alternate members should have just been moved up to the full position. The alternates did not seek an interview and apparently were not proactive enough to find out if they even needed to. Uh, so, now the victim crowd cries a foul. Well, mind you, the board already knew about the alternates from their prior session and had voted unanimously to vote the new person in. Keep in mind that nobody's positions were being taken away. Here's some video on that. Um, honestly, whatever the board decides to do tonight, I'm totally fine with either candidate or, or whatever we want to do. But yeah, I think same thing. I did want to point out that contrary to the email that we received, none of this was accidental, right? The board already knew about the alternative situation as it was discussed when all of us were there in attendance at candidate interviews. We also gave pretty clear direction to staff what we should do for the situation in the future. That direction was a very simple Ms. Garcia, would you please make sure that you explicitly inform our alternates that they need to apply if they wish in the event of, of, of vacancy? Uh, the reason for that was also to satisfy trustee Gator's request that all town board members would have the opportunity to interview all potential candidates. So uh, the current vacancy term that Ms. Moline was set to fill expires on April 2023. 
If is both Ms. Molin and Mr. Pillow would like to reapply again when that term expires, they'll have that opportunity. So I'll be honest and say, you know, after the discussion that we had, I'm a little bit confused as to why this was pulled from consent, considering that we had all left that meeting in unanimous agreement. Uh, moving on, Sheral explained why they were bringing it up again. I'll we'll just let you see that for yourself. So it was brought up that we as trustees left with a single agreement, and I wanted to address um, Trustee Mason's question on why this was coming back and brought off consent agenda. One, it was requested by two separate residents that it be opened back up for public comment. I typically won't refuse a resident reaching out and saying, hey, we want to have a voice on this. That was one of the reasons it was on my list to open it back up for public comment because we are here to serve the people. And if the people want to give an opinion, we should allow them to do so. So moving forward, if you contact Trustee Teeth and she doesn't request something to be opened up again for your request, uh, you have a reason to go to the board on it. Hence, according to that video, she's pretty much saying that's her president. So to summarize, Everything was fine. The prior vote had been unanimous until that crimey liver group came up in Miflis. During public comment, Geyer's wife, previously on the Board of Adjustments, made put a comment basically using seniority as a method of moving people from alternate to a full position instead of interviewing for experienced candidates. And then the misinformation started. So I just want to let you know that you are getting rid of um, one of the best people they have, one of the most engaged and one that talks and asks the most questions. It seems like she forgot that Nuffalbani's position is being taken away. So nobody's losing anybody. The person in question was temporarily filling a seat until it could be filled. He was still an alternate, and at the time of her plummet, he was still an alternate. Nothing changed. And like I said, two full positions will be coming available in April. Besides that, her husband even stated that the positions on the Board of Adjustments need to include interviews by each trustee, and the alternate that was filling that seat temporarily had only been interviewed by two trustees. So that's not going to hold water either. I want to make it really clear right now that what we want is experienced people in this position. And that's why we need to continue the interviewing process and not just move alternates to help. Alternates may have been chosen as an alternate for a reason. Alternates and members can reapply like everyone else. We're not lacking in applicants for these positions, and the best ones should be the ones on the board. Instead, it appears that we should be more worried about someone's feelings over someone's ability to do the job. We reached out to someone to pull a core report for us to get a copy of the email that the mayor referred to in the beginning, but we have not received it as of the recording of this episode. Suffice it to say that the mayor in that clip was reading directly from the email during his comment. Uh, feel free to do a core request of your own to get a copy of that email. At the end result, someone that didn't interview for your position and had only been interviewed by two trustees when appointed into an OGDEC position now has a whole position until April of this year. At that time, he will need to interview and start all over again to see if he will get any position on the Board of Adjustments as he gave up his current position for this new position that would be expiring in 2026. Be on the lookout for our next full episode as there's newer to talk about from that meeting than what an episode of Not So Fast would allow. And for the love of God, lock your doors! <laughs> Thank you.